Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. So today I want to talk about GCN and RDNA. Essentially the fact that I believe that RDNA is going to follow very similarly in the footsteps of GCN. Now what sparked this video is Paul from Not An Apple Fan. He did a video here today on AMD's apparent leaked roadmap. Now there's nothing crazy in there, so I, I'm not going to talk specifically about that. But in that video, he basically believes that RDNA 2.0 will come to the desktop and will possibly not even be in the consoles. Now, I disagree with that theory because of looking at history, which is part of what I agree with him on, is when we look at the past, we can see what the future looks like. Now, this is important to us as PC gamers because GPU prices, as I've mentioned, have started getting completely out of control. And for many of us, Upgrades are going to become less and less frequent, so buying the right graphics card that's going to last the absolute maximum amount of time is becoming increasingly more important. So you want to make sure that you get something that's going to last as far into the next generation as you possibly can. Maybe you don't care and maybe you upgrade all the time, so this really wouldn't matter to you, but it's still going to be a little bit of a history lesson. But for those of us that are looking to maximize our value per dollar that we spend on this hobby, this is pretty important stuff. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at here today. Now, I've made this comparison before. The Radeon HD 7870 and the 7850 remind me very, very much to the 5700 and 5700 XT. So if we look at the 7870, it came out, it was $349. This was back in 2012, so we're talking seven years ago. And this is on 28 nanometers. It has a 256-bit memory bus. And this was positioned as kind of a low high-end card or a high mid-range card, depending on which way you wanted to look at it. Now going on over to the 5700 XT, I believe that this is its direct replacement seven years later. If we take a look, $399, so a little bit of a price increase. We have the 256-bit memory bus, and looking at the die size, we have 251 millimeters squared, and the 7870 came out at 212. So even die size is relatively similar. It's a little bit bigger on the 5700 XT, and perhaps that's the reason part of the reason why price was increased. That manufacturing process and a bunch of other things could be out there. But overall, that seems to fit. This is the first time AMD has launched a new architecture in seven years, and this seems to fit right in line with where the 7870 landed. Now, this really begs the question because the 7870 was not the first of the GCN cards. Instead, the 7970 was the first card to come out. This was a $549 card, came out a few months earlier, back in 2011. This had a 384-bit memory bus on it and a 350 millimeter squared die. So this, to me, tells me that RDNA 1.0, much like GCN 1.0, can scale up a little bit higher if they want to. And that's something I talked about in this video right here. I talked about the fact that we could see an RX 5800 sometime this year if AMD wanted to bring it, essentially being the 7970 replacement. Now, how does this all tie into consoles? And how does this really show us what the future is going to be? Well, if we go over here to Wikipedia, we can see that the PS4 and Xbox One, these launched November 2013. These were on 28 nanometers. These were GCN2 based architectures. Even though a lot of people like to equate these to something like the 7850 or the 7870, something similar, like I said, would be the 5700 or 5700 XT in today's terms, these were technically more advanced than the GCN1 based 7870 and 7850. Now, if we scale on back to AMD's uh, GPU wiki over here, links to all this will be in the description below, so you can check it out for yourself. You can see that the first GCN 2-based graphics card came out in March 2013. This was the 7790. It was basically just a gap filler between the 7850, so roughly the 5700 in today's terms, and what's likely going to be the new Navi 14, which should be coming out here soon. So it was basically a high low end card. Um, they were just testing out the architecture to make sure that it worked on a cheaper chip that if it didn't work out so well, well, it didn't really matter. However, GCN2 really started taking off with the R9 290X. That's the one that everybody pretty much thinks of as the launch of GCN2. This came out in October 24th, 2013. 
and that's just one month before the PS4 and Xbox One launched. The importance of this is we can see that AMD historically is okay with releasing their big chip, the absolute monster, right before the launch of a new console. So what this says to me is that the next-gen consoles will likely be using RDNA 2. We will likely see an RDNA 2 cheaper graphics card sometime end of Q1, early Q2 next year, and then we will get the large GCN 2 or RDNA 2 uh, GPUs towards basically when the next-gen consoles come out, towards the end of next year. Now, unlike what they did with GCN, I think AMD is going to keep the naming scheme a little bit more clean. Because if we take a look, even on the 7000 series, we have one, two, three architectures. When we go down to the R9 200 series, we have one, two, three, four architectures in that series. And then going down to the 300 series, uh, we have one, two, three architectures. So that got really, really confusing. So what I think AMD is likely going to do so if we basically consider the 5700 XT here today equivalent to the 7870, which stuck around from the 7000 series all the way through the 300 series, it would be a pretty fair assumption that AMD will keep this architecture around. They're not going to replace everything with RDNA 2.0 once RDNA 2.0 comes out. They will just phase things in and out as time comes on, and they will just lower prices as time goes on. So analyzing what happened six years ago, back in 2013, we can kind of see what's going to happen next year with the next-gen consoles. It seems likely that we will get some sort of low, high, low-end GPU with RDNA 2.0 coming out probably March-ish, maybe a little bit later, maybe a little earlier, but that'll probably be on the 7 nanometer EUV, so AMD can test that out on small die, make sure that it works, and fix any bugs that may need to be done. Then a few months later, they will release their very large GPU, which I believe will be the 5900 series, because we have not yet seen the big RDNA 1.0 like we did with GCN. I do believe an RX 5800 series is probably going to be out somewhere near the holiday season this year. I'm actually expecting an announcement at any time because this is when they should launch it, you know, maximize their profits because of the holiday season. Perhaps they want to push it closer so this way they don't have to lower prices for Black Friday, maybe launch it right around, you know, the Black Friday holiday season. I don't know. That's up to their marketing team. But we, I'm expecting something like that to be coming out. That should be somewhere near the RTX 2080 Ti level graphics, maybe a little bit slower like the 5700 versus the 2070 Super, but close enough to where it doesn't really matter. So that's what I think is going to happen. The next-gen consoles will use RDNA 2.0, just like they went ahead and used GCN 2.0. RDNA 2.0, from what I'm hearing on the back end, in the background from people, is that RDNA 2 is a much bigger leap than RDNA 1. It's going to be infinitely more efficient on power. And once I heard that, I'm like, yes, that's what they will use in consoles. They need that power efficiency, which we don't really have that much on our DNA one. While it did kind of get AMD closer, it's equal to NVIDIA's, you know, 12 nanometer GPUs. That's not really that impressive considering they're on seven nanometer. That's a full node shrink. So they need even further refinements in power to keep up with NVIDIA's next gen GPUs. But this all seems very reminiscent to what happened in the past. Turing feels very much like Maxwell. It was a big architectural increase, but it wasn't that big of a deal because it was held back by the manufacturing process. I believe for NVIDIA, next generation on 7 nanometer or 7 nanometer EUV or whatever they go with is probably going to be more like the Pascal generation, which was a big jump where they take those architectural gains plus the manufacturing gains, combine them, and that's going to be really big. AMD has had a massive architectural increase, have had the node shrink, but didn't really get the massive gains that we were expecting. I think RDNA 2 is going to allow them to regain that efficiency, and then they'll be very, very competitive with NVIDIA. So I think that both companies are going to be doing pretty well moving forward. The big thing is, is that RDNA 2 is going to be in the consoles. That's going to be the baseline. And honestly, that's the architecture I'm looking forward to seeing. To me, investing in RDNA 1 is very much like buying GCN 1 when that came out. 
Something like the 7850, 7870, 7950, and 7970 still held up pretty well into this generation. And some can argue that the 7970, which I think will be the RX 5800 series, I, I think that that's going to be good enough for most people if you keep resolution in check. But if you like higher res, you're probably best off waiting for whatever is going to be the next R9 290 and 290X. However, I don't believe that they're going to be nearly as budget friendly as the R9 290 and 290X. I think that they're going to be shooting for that premium tier pricing like Nvidia does. And they're going to be expensive. But they, will, they should be out Q3 next year right before the consoles launch and that's going to be the gpu that should last the entire generation especially if you get one with you know enough memory i'm assuming 16 gigs at that point is probably going to be what they'll have and that should be enough to do it so that's kind of what i'm looking for personally i'm okay with a little bit lower resolution 1080p is fine for me so rdna1 might be good enough if you're in the same boat but realistically i think the next generation from nvidia and the next generation from AMD is really what we should all be waiting for. If you're kind of on the fence and you're looking to invest long term, if you're spending three or three to five hundred dollars, like I mentioned in the last video, it's the new mainstream. If you're going to be spending that much money, if I do, I want it to last at least six or seven years. I want it to last the whole generation. So if I'm going to do that, I'd rather wait until there's a card that can do that. I don't believe anything out today is really going to hang in there. Um, not in that price point, 2080 TI, maybe, you know, if you equate that to like a 780 TI, um, you know, that, that hung in there. I mean, it's still somewhat usable here today, but realistically you're better off just waiting. I think that next gen's really going to be the big one and we're, we should get it probably from Nvidia mid next year. And I'm assuming Q3 from AMD. But those are just my thoughts. Looking at the past, that seems to make sense. We're very much following in lockstep. I hope AMD is smart and doesn't screw up the naming scheme. Instead of changing the generational name, just keep everything 5000 series. You know, when the 5800 comes out, um, I think that'll just slot in. But, you know, if you want to replace, uh, let's say, the 5700s with an RDNA 2 version, you could just call it a 5750 or something like that. I think that that would make sense until you refresh the entire lineup with RDNA 2.0. I think that it makes sense to go ahead and just keep the 5000 series. Even if that lasts three to five years, that's fine. Just keep it nice and clean. Make it make sense. Unlike GCN, that was really the biggest fumble with AMD. Uh, using three or four generations of cards in a single generational name. It got really confusing. So hopefully they don't do that. They just lower prices, change the price points, maybe add in a 50 at the end if there's any significant changes, maybe like manufacturing process or, like I said, architectural changes. That would make some sense. But we'll see if they do that. Overall, that's what I think is going to happen. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Makes the most sense to me, looking at the past, to predict the future. But once again, want to see what you guys think on this. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. That really does help me out. And if you want to help support the channel for as little as $1 a month, you can become a patron over on Patreon. We can discuss this stuff in Discord. And I really do appreciate everybody who supports the channel that way. That's all I have for today. And I will catch you guys in the next video.